Hi, fourth graders, welcome back. It's Miss Nichols again. Glad you could be back to join me for another Making Meaning lesson. If you've been here in the past watching some of the lessons for fourth grade, you'll know that I have three cats, Panther Blake and Caicos, a little lion head bunny named Simba. And last time I shared a little fun fact with you that I was born and raised in a small town in Alaska called Sitka. And you'll see a picture of Sitka. The uh, snow-capped mountain there is Mount Edgecombe. It's a extinct volcano that obviously has blown its top many, many hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. Um, and that's my little small town that I was raised in. So glad you could join us. Let's get started. As always, you'll need a few materials for the lesson today. If you have the district packet that has the pages in it already printed for you, that's great. Uh, if not, you can go ahead and use a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil. You're gonna need your reading log again this time and uh, you'll need a turn and talk partner. Remember that turn and talk partner is just someone that you can share your thoughts and ideas with so that they're not stuck in your head. That could be someone in your family older or younger. It can be maybe a friend that's watching the same lesson from their home and maybe you're talking with them online or on the phone. Maybe you are just talking to your pet or a pretend fit, a friend, or maybe you're having a pretend conversation with one of your favorite celebrities. Who might that be? Just remember that whatever language you're using is the one that's most comfortable for you at home. We are almost at the end of our Making Meaning lessons for this year. It's really important for us to think back to the work that we've done this unit so that we can frame what we're about to do today and how the work that we've done in the previous weeks and lessons have provided this opportunity to practice all these things. We identified important ideas together in our read aloud books. There was Flight and the picture book of Amelia Earhart, and we also had The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind and our most recent uh, Looking at Rosa Parks. You used those texts that we read together or that you read with other teachers in our recorded lessons and used those to identify important ideas in each of those texts. And from those important ideas, we use those to build summaries of those books. Sometimes we did that together. Sometimes you practice some of that on your own. We practiced giving reasons for our, our, our opinions and our thinking. We also uh, practiced making summaries, building summaries of some of our selected IDR books. We selected our favorite IDR book a couple of lessons ago. And now it's time for us to summarize one of your favorite IDR books so that in our next lesson, our last lesson together, you'll have a chance to make some book recommendations and we can think about some of our choices or books that we might be excited about for summer reading. In our last lesson together, if you weren't with us, what we did was we looked through our reading logs, whether it was one that we have in our student response journal or maybe the one that was in the packet that we've been using. Maybe you've just been keeping track of it on uh, a piece of paper recording the books that you've read in IDR. You're going to want to select a couple of your favorites and then narrow it down and pick just one. If you haven't done that, you might want to pause the video here to do that now. For today's lesson, we're gonna spend some time reviewing our selected IDR book. Hopefully you had a chance to go back and refresh your memory, to look it over a bit, to skim and scan. Whether it's, if it was a short book, maybe you went back and reviewed the entire book. If it was a long chapter book, maybe you just settled in on one chapter that seemed really important that you'd like to summarize. We're going to identify the important ideas that should be included in your summaries, and then we're gonna have a chance to write those summaries of that book. 
This is the point in the lesson where you may need to pause for just a short bit. If you've not had a chance to really reread the text, whether it's the entire one or it's a chapter, and really either use some sticky notes or a sheet of paper to record those important ideas for your text, you'll want to do that now. So you're looking for the important ideas in whatever section you are choosing to summarize, whether it's the whole book or just a portion. And again, you're gonna want to go back and read that again and use sticky notes to really capture those important ideas. Please do that now. If you need to review your book to find the important ideas and you need a little bit more time doing so, and you don't have the book at home, don't forget, you can go to Seattle Public Schools, go to the SPS website, click on the Student Family Portals, and then select the Academic Tools button. There you'll find options for Tumble Books, Kids Reads, and Pebble Go. And you can search to see if they have your favorite book that you're working with there. If you don't find it in any of those resources, don't forget to go to Seattle Public Library. Seattle Public Library has an exciting new program for Seattle Public School students to get access to online books without a library card. You can do that by, go, by going to Library Link. There they will show you how to get signed up in the tutorial that they provide. Welcome back. What are some important ideas that you marked that you want to include in your summary? Why do those ideas seem important? I want you to think about this for just a moment and get ready to share your thinking with someone else. Look over your list. Why did you pick those important ideas? Why are they important? Go ahead and turn and talk. Welcome back. Hopefully you had a chance to really explain your thinking about the important ideas that you chose and were able to share with someone else why you think those are the best ones to include in your summary. Let's take a look back at some of the summaries or excerpts, summaries of excerpts of books or small passages that we've had a chance to look at together most recently in our lessons. We had the picture book of Amelia Earhart. And there you will see the summary that we built together. You will also see the boy who harnessed the wind and the summary that we built. And most recently with Ms. Hafsala, you spent some time looking at building a summary of the excerpt, a picture book of Rosa Parks, and also looking at Rosa Parks, My Story. So familiarize yourself with these examples these will help us to serve as models that we can look back to to help us as we build our summaries on our own. If you need to pause the video at any point while you're writing your summary during this lesson, you'll want to come back to these and read them over to get a sense of what we included in those summaries. As we get ready to start writing our summaries of our favorite IDR books, let's spend a little bit of time thinking about writing those opening sentences for our summary. We have the summary of an excerpt, a picture book of Rosa Parks here, and we also have the summary, the first sentence, of a boy who harnessed the wind. And we're just looking at the first sentences Let's think about what do these two opening sentences have in common? Should I think for just a moment? You're gonna go ahead and turn and share with someone what do you notice about these two that is similar? When we look at both of these opening sentences for the summaries, we notice that both have the title of the book mentioned right away. This excerpt from a picture book of Rosa Parks and 
the boy who harnessed the wind are both titles. And then you'll notice that following that information in both of these first sentences, you'll notice that the author is named next. The excerpt from a picture book of Rosa Parks by David A. Adler and The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kakwamba and Brian Miller, both of those follow a similar pattern of naming the title and then the author. And then we look at the rest of that opening sentence. We see that they both include some very general information, kind of the big idea of each of those pieces of text. We look at the uh, picture book of Rosa Parks. It says that it describes something important that Rosa Parks did to challenge segregation laws in the South. That was the big idea that we read about and the work that went into that and what happened to Rosa Parks uh, based on her decision to not give up her seat. And then we look at the rest of the sentence for the boy who harnessed the wind. This story is a true story about a boy from Malawi who saved his village from starving. And remember that that was because he built a windmill and provided electricity and then water for his village and then the country of Malawi. But we didn't include all of the little details that the story included, only the big idea in that opening sentence. Let's think about those things as we start to think about creating our opening sentences for our summaries. So if we want to think of, about a pattern or just kind of a guide for what we need to include in those opening sentences, You'll want to think about the title, the author, and the big idea. So what might you say in the opening sentence for your book or chapter? Let's pause here for a moment and give it a try. You're going to go ahead and take out the sheet that you have in your packet, or if you're working just with a loose leaf piece of paper, you're, want, you're going to want to write summary of and then your title of the book that you're going to be summarizing. Once you do that and you're all set, go ahead and give that first sentence a try. And don't forget, you can always pause the video and go back and look at the examples that we have of the others. So what did you come up with? Let's spend a few minutes to share your opening sentence with someone at home. Go ahead and share it out loud and then maybe talk to them about what it is that you chose to include as the big idea. Now that you have that opening sentence drafted out for your summary, we're gonna go ahead and continue writing. Just remember as you're writing that summary, that you're going to want to include the big events or moments of that story, not all the tiny little details. Even if we think that they're really interesting, are those really the most important parts that we're going to want to share? We only have so much that we can include in a summary because it needs to be brief. It shouldn't be the whole story over again. So what are those most important parts for people to understand what happened in that section or in that book? You're going to want to tell the events in maybe the order that they happened within the story or some sort of logical order so that people don't get mixed up and not really understand what happened. And you're also going to want to make sure that your words that you choose to use in your summary to describe all those things are your own words and not just what's on the page within the book. So let's think about this again. Your opening sentence will have the author, the title, and the big idea all wrapped into one sentence. And then to summarize it, S-U-M, sum is shorter than the text, U is use your own words, and M is main ideas only. Okay, let's get started. 
Okay, hopefully you paused for a bit and had a chance to do some more writing about your summary. If not, you're going to want to continue that work. But we also want to spend some time doing our independent daily reading after the lesson. Remember, you're going to choose a Just Right book, hopefully one that you're really interested in. You're going to want to read at least 30 minutes. And after reading, either in your packet or on a sheet of paper, you're going to answer the questions below. Would you recommend the book that you're reading to someone else? Why or why not? Be sure to include reasons for why you would or would not recommend it to someone else. You can think about this stem. The reason I think this is, and that might help you as you're writing those out. Why would you recommend them? Before our next lesson, you're going to want to spend some time finishing that summary of your favorite IDR book. You're gonna need it for our next lesson. Our next lesson is our last Making Meaning lesson together. And for our lesson, we are need to be prepared to give some summer book recommendations. We're getting so close, summer is almost here. And we need to have some books lined up that we're excited about that you can think about reading so that you can keep those reading skills going and be ready for next year. So make sure that you finish that summary and be sure to share it with someone at home. Remember, if you're running out of IDR books or maybe you're still working on that summary and you need to review the book that you've selected but you don't have it at your house, Remember, there's great resources that might have that particular book available to read online. If you go to the Seattle Public Schools web, uh, main website, you will visit the student family portals and click on the academic tools that provide some resources that we know have books. You can search them by book title. Uh, Tumble Books, Kids Read, Pebble Go are some options there. And very exciting, a new resource that we have is through Seattle Public Library. And although the libraries are still closed, you can go online and get set up for free, even if you don't have a library card. They have a new source called Library Link. And if you go to the Seattle Public Library webpage, they will walk you through with a tutorial of how you can get set up with just a few pieces of information that you have about you as a Seattle Public Schools student. There is Libby, which is a great library online source that you can find lots and lots of books. So let's get reading.